Okay, glasses are coming off for this one. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna be talking. So, <laughs> it's a pretty crazy story. I'm gonna be talking about my application process to study abroad in South Korea, specifically Yonsei University. I had to go through a crazy process. It was extremely stressful, but I'm at the point where there's like one more stressor, but I feel like I've dealt with so much that I'm like, if it happens, it happens. But yeah, it was just like a series of me getting screwed over again and again. So I'm going to talk about that today. Where do you even start? Basically, if you know studying abroad in South Korea, specifically Yonsei University, you know that one of their main methods of allowing students to come study abroad is through their exchange program. And the exchange program is primarily done through your home university. So your home university will help set that up for you, will help you through the application process. All you really have to do, at least at my school, is apply, send in your application materials, and then your school handles the rest. That's pretty much it. So that's what I was doing. So at my school, study abroad is very limited. There's not many places to go to. Some programs are only in the spring or only in the fall. Your major greatly impacts the amount of choices that you have for places to study abroad to. As a film major, I only had two choices at my school, and that was South Korea and London. And I've already been to London and I really want to go to an Asian country. So I was like, okay, South Korea. And Squid Games came out. Just wanting to learn more about the film industry through the lens of South Korea really encouraged me to choose this place. So South Korea was my number one and London was my backup. London was so much more straightforward for film students. Like they had film programs. South Korea was more like a, mm, maybe it might happen. I did all the research and found that all the classes fit with the ones I needed to take to graduate. So I found it to be a good fit for me. I was keeping London as my backup up, but I really didn't want to go there. <laughs> oh my gosh, it gets wild. So, South Korea, right? I already tackled this big sort of setback on the classes, maybe, maybe not working out for me. Completed that. We're good. Okay, applying. I was working with my study abroad counselor, who is at his first year being a study abroad advisor at my school. <laughs> Dude, red flag. <laughs> He's insanely nice, and he was very encouraging, very supportive, and I think that's the number one reason why I don't hold anything against him, even though everything is his fault and it gets really bad. Anyways, he told me that a while ago he had emailed the school and they told him the deadline December 4th for application. So I had to send in my application material to my home university by like October 22nd and then they had all this time to process my application to get it all set up and get everything working and ready for me to go. They had until December 4th, apparently that's what he was saying. Time comes, I'm very, very thorough in my application. I make sure that I have everything ready. I literally met with him like five times I was very prepared, okay? I have been pretty much warping my entire college career around studying abroad, specifically in the spring of my junior year, right? I saved the specific GEs I needed, I saved some film classes, got it all set up. Literally, I've been planning for this for years. I was ready. After I send my application on time, I'm just chilling. I'm waiting for my school to do their part. Right before Thanksgiving break, I get an email from my study abroad advisor, and he says, we need to schedule a last minute meeting. How soon can you come in before you leave for break? I was like, I can come in tomorrow. I was literally walking with my friend when I got that email and I was telling her, I really hope it's not something like, oh, I can't go anymore. And she said, nah, why would it be that? Don't worry. But I'm thinking, why else would he need to schedule a last minute emergency meeting with me? Like, what is so urgent? I go into the meeting and he sits me down. And <laughs> it's so funny because he was like, any plans for Thanksgiving? Casual talk. And then he's like, anyway, so bad news. Can't study abroad. I didn't even process what he fully was saying to me until after I left that meeting. I was just in this total state of shock, so I was just like, oh. <laughs> Long story short, he was working off of the wrong deadline. Instead of December 4th, my application to Yonsei was due October 31st. <sighs> And you know, afterwards when I was telling my parents about it and stuff, my dad was searching online for the due date. He was like, a simple Google search would have showed up that the deadline was October 31st. And I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. I was looking up deadlines where he could have maybe gotten this December 4th deadline. And there was absolutely nothing I could find associated with Yonsei for December 4th. So I really don't know where he got that from. I was really sad. I was like crying for hours and hours and hours and hours. And then I realized that something he told me in that meeting 
meeting that he emailed the school and asked them for an exception for me and that they emailed back saying no. They were already reviewing applications and the deadline to apply for the visa through the school had passed. They were telling him there's no way she can apply as an exchange student. Sorry, and that's what he was telling me. In his email, he was saying, I have a student that's really excited to go. I was like, girl, tell him it's detrimental. Why are you making it sound so trivial? I literally planned my entire college career around this. I have to go. I already planned to spend my semester abroad. This was my only option. London was canceled because there wasn't enough people who applied. So my backup option was out of the question. This was the only place that I could go. We ended the meeting with me asking him to email them one more time just to ask. Sometime the next day, I was scrolling through TikTok and I was specifically searching up the tag Yonsei University study abroad. I don't even know why, just to make myself sad, I guess. Did not do anything for my emotional health. But scrolling through that, something hit me and I realized that in our meeting that we had, he told me that the application for the visa had passed. I was thinking of different scenarios and trying to process everything that he had told me. And so I realized if they are still reviewing applications, why couldn't I just sneak mine in right now? But then I remembered what he said about the visa and them saying that the deadline had passed. Something wasn't right. It was November. I wouldn't be going until mid-February. I was wondering, does it really take that long to process a visa? So I started searching it up. How long does it take for you to apply and receive your visa? And the most common answer I was getting was around two to three weeks. So it got me thinking, what if I could contact them and somehow convince them to give me an extension because they're still reviewing applications and ask if I could just apply for my visa myself and not through the school. So I personally sent them an email. I explained my perspective and everything that happened. I had everything set in place. And then this mistake that wasn't even mine was coming unfairly to take that away. I mean, I worded it more professionally. And I was explaining to them what I was planning to do as a study abroad applicant at their school, the potential that I could bring as a film student. A few days had passed and I literally spent my entire Thanksgiving break stressing out about this. It was not fun. And I decided that I should just call them. I was literally with my boyfriend. We were out driving to different gas stations trying to find a calling card. We couldn't find one. We drove to like six different places. My parents gave me a calling card from Hawaii and they told me the number. By the time I got the calling card, it was already past business hours in South Korea. So I had to wait till the next day. Next day rolls by, I give them a call. I tell them how I sent them an email and I just wanted a little update on that. And they told me that although I can't apply as an exchange student, they'll offer me an extension to apply as a visiting student. And they haven't emailed me back yet because they presented this offer to my study abroad advisor and they were waiting for his approval before sending me the information and allowing me to apply. So I emailed him right away and I was like, yo, I'm down, like let's do this. He was telling me that he had to talk to his supervisor and talk to all these different offices at my home university to make sure it was okay. It was kind of nerve wracking for me because they were already giving me an extension. Let me apply so I don't miss it again. Additionally, a student at my home university that I was working with while applying to study abroad had gone to Yonsei as a visiting student, not an exchange student. So it has been done before at my school. So I was really curious as to why this was such a long process to have me approved. For those of you who don't know, exchange student, like I said, is done through your school. Visiting student is done independently. I had to apply all on my own, do everything independently. How I pay the tuition directly to Yonsei instead of through my school, all of this stuff. It took two weeks for him to give his approval for me to apply as a visiting student. When he finally did, I applied, got it out of the way, preparing other stuff. I was also planning a backup just in case I had to stay at my school for a semester. I think just being so confident that it was gonna happen and then having everything crumbling down really took a toll on me. Up to just a couple weeks ago, I had been telling myself, yeah, everything's pretty much set, but it could not happen. It's not over yet. When I finally received my acceptance into Yonsei University, I right away started to search for the details in applying for on-campus housing because I realized that it's a competitive program. Someone had told me that the deadline was around American New Year's. Eventually, I found out that I had been accepted into Yonsei three days after the application for on-campus housing had closed and I missed the waitlist application by one day. If my study abroad advisor had just let me apply as a visiting student when I was ready, even if it was three days earlier, I feel like I could have gotten into on-campus housing. I've never been to South Korea before. I'm not Korean. I don't know like any customs. I don't know anything about what it's like to visit South Korea, much less live there. So the stress just comes flooding back. And if you know trying to find off-campus housing in Seoul, specifically for attending your university, it's very hard. I don't even know why. Like, first of all, a lot of the 
these apartment websites and stuff are in Korean and a lot of them have different ways like deposit and wiring and you have to contact people, find people who speak English. You have to find an apartment that's furnished in walking distance of your school. It is safe, has a washing machine, and then can you quarantine there because there's a 10 day quarantine mandate. A lot of variables. My dad gave me this deadline. He said, if you don't find some place to stay within next week, you're not going. <laughs> Stress. I thought I had found this apartment and it was really nice. There was something that was sort of off about it to me. I don't know, it just wasn't clicking, but I needed a place to stay. I was in contact with the person who was helping me rent it. It was a 25 minute walk from the center of my campus one way. The entire walk was through alleyways, kind of sketchy. And even though Seoul is really safe, I was thinking about knowing that there was no other students here that attend Yonsei, much less people that I would become friends with. So if I had a night out with friends, I would have to walk back by myself in the dark through alleys. I don't know, it just wasn't really wasn't clicking. Thankfully, right before I was about to send the deposit and completely claim this apartment, my dad found out about this share house that was literally across the street from Yonsei. It's specifically for international students. It's dorm-like. The building is literally called Yonsei Hall. It was with other students, really safe, within our budget. It was so nice. It worked out for me with housing. I booked that and they allowed me to quarantine there, so it's perfect. So everything is working out. The only thing now is <laughs> I just recently sent in my visa application and it takes around two to three weeks to get back. That's cutting it very close to when I have to leave. I live in Hawaii and the Korean embassy is on a completely different island than me, so I can't go in person. It took me so long to get in contact with them. When I finally did, I was able to figure out how to send all my stuff. I literally almost applied for the wrong application. It's a good thing I'm in a group chat with other study abroad students going to Yonsei because they were asking questions about the application and I was like, I already got mine done. I'm about to send it tomorrow. And they were asking about a specific question. I was like, where do you see that? I don't see that question on mine. <laughs> yeah, it turns out I was filling out the wrong application. So I'm so thankful that I found that group chat and I have this community to talk to and help me out with questions. It really helped me feel not as alone, especially because I had to do everything by myself. The post office said that it was supposed to arrive today, January 24th. Three weeks from today is February 14th and I'm leaving February 15th. Fingers crossed. I I really hope that it comes back in time. We'll see, because also if my application isn't approved, I get something wrong in my application, I forgot to send something in, then I'm screwed. So that's what I'm dealing with now. And that should be really stressful for me, but I literally have gone through all this stuff where you can't go. Oh, you can go, but you have no place to live. Well, maybe you can't go because your visa might not come back in time. Yeah, all of this. <sighs> So hopefully it works out. I made it this far. Thank you for listening to my story, hearing me go on and on about my issues. If you have any questions about the application process, you don't say, leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions. All in all, I'm just super excited and I'm really grateful that I have this opportunity. When else am I gonna get to study abroad? I feel like this is definitely something that I'm meant to do. I hope that you all have a very, very great day or night or whatever time it is for you. Bye.